Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. Today, we are going to be talking about book to movie adaptations. Specifically, books that I want to see be made into movies or TV shows. This video was kind of prompted by the fact that I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and would love for it to be ma made into a movie and then I found out that it actually is being made into a movie. So I thought about all the other books that I've read that I would also like to see turned into movies and I actually have a list that I keep, a running list of all the books that I would like to see turned into movies. Specifically because I want to turn them into movies but we're not there yet so for now it's just a wish list of books that I would like to see turned into movies so I thought why not share some of that list with you. I have shortened my list and now we shall get into the books that I would like to see turned into a movie. First up we have I Mona Lisa by Natasha Solomons. This book is basically a fictional biography of the painting Mona Lisa told from the perspective of the painting. It's a very interesting book and I th think that it could be a very interesting kind of art house video, not video, movie because of the way that it's told so you could technically watch the movie from the perspective of the painting if that makes any sense not all of it but some parts and the writing is just very descriptive and you can just picture what's happening in your mind while you're reading this book so i think it would make a brilliant movie the next book i want to talk about i don't own a copy of um i borrowed this book from my friend a couple of years ago when i read it but it is seven deaths of evelyn hardcastle and I think that this would make a fantastic series. Like, if the BBC made a limited series out of this book, it would be so good. Because, again, it can be told, it could be portrayed in a very interesting way, or at least the way that I picture it in my brain. Because it follows seven different protagonists throughout the course of the story, who are all, or technically one protagonist but in seven different people's bodies who is trying to figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle while also having to deal with other characters working against him who are either trying to stop him from figuring out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle or also trying to figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle because whoever figures it out first gets to leave this kind of loop that they're living in because they relive the same day that Evelyn Hardcastle was killed every day until somebody figures out who did it. So whoever figures it out first um, gets to leave this loop and return back to their normal lives. I also think that it could make a very very interesting series because you could do an episode from the perspective of each different, each of the different characters or the people that this main protagonist inhabits so yes I think it would be a very interesting series to watch and also it was a really great book I really enjoyed it so I would like to see it in a series form the next book I want to talk about is my favorite classic of all time it is Vile Bodies by Evelyn Wall I think <laughs> this would make such a ridiculously ridiculous movie. It could also be a really great stage play, I think. I don't know if anybody who has made this into a stage play, and I also don't know if it has been made into a movie, but I don't think so. Um, it could be a great stage play, but the thing is, it is set in a lot of many different places, and I feel that you would lose some of the ridiculousness of the story if you couldn't portray all of those places which is quite hard to do on the stage because you have as you know only this much space and you would have to keep changing the set designs and the backgrounds in between to portray all these different places which you know technically could be done but it would be much easier to do it in a movie and um, I think this could be such great fun 
if you had a bunch of really great young actors all play these ridiculously snobbish and just hilarious roles. And I think everybody would have a really great time. And I would have a very good time watching it. On the next one, I might lose you a little bit. But just give me a chance to explain. Because you wouldn't necessarily think that this book could be turned into a movie. Because it's a non-fiction book. Um, and although I didn't particularly really enjoy this book, I was definitely intrigued and was actually picturing this book as an animated short film in my head while I was reading it. Um, that book is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. Now let me explain to you how I see this happening. Because Virginia writes in stream of consciousness style and basically tells you what she's doing while she's also telling you what she's thinking, I thought it would be a very interesting kind of thing to do to put this in animation, probably 2D animation, because I feel if you made it 3D animation it wouldn't be... just wouldn't be the same, but 2D animation of her going about her day and all the things that she tells you about that she's doing while you hear a voiceover of what she's thinking in the background. And um, <laughs> yes, this is just my own indulgence. I'm just indulging myself in imagining this as a 2D animation movie because it would probably never be made and also it would be very hard to make it work and probably also nobody would want to watch it. But I would. I would want to watch it, so it's on my list. The next one that I want to talk to you about is <laughs> The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I have read this book a long time ago, but I remember when I was reading it, it was one of the first books that while I was reading it, I could picture it being made into a movie because it was a little movie in my head while I was making it, but also, um, the cast of characters is very diverse because it is literally all these kind of different species and all of their different intricacies and quirks and all the things that make them special on this one spaceship trying to work towards a common goal. I really thought that this was a great book and I also, while I was reading it, I was thinking that it could be made into a movie and I stand by my... <sighs> How old was I when I read this? I don't remember, some years ago self, because I still do think that this could be made into a great movie, and also a different kind of space movie than, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek and Guardians of the Galaxy and all of those things where it's like more action-packed and all that kind of stuff. I just thought that this would be a very interesting and different take on space civilization. The next book is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. It is The Method by Julie Zay. Now, the thing is, the way that I would make this movie would make it inaccessible to a lot of people, but because this book is originally in, written in German, I would love to see the movie actually in German. Obviously, you can have subtitles, and you know how popular the lady with the... what? Portrait of a... <laughs> I was like, the lady with the dress on fire? No, Portrait of a Lady on Fire was very popular and it was in French and everybody who did not speak French had to read the subtitles to actually understand what they were saying. So it helped also that they didn't talk that much, but I would love to see this movie made in German. It's also a very interesting concept and I think it would also make a very interesting movie because I just think so and you just have to believe me because if you haven't read this book then you don't know what I'm talking about but if you have read this book then either you strongly disagree with me or you strongly agree with me this book basically follows a young woman whose brother gets convicted of a crime and is executed but 
both she and her brother are convinced that he never committed the crime that he was accused of. And throughout the book, this young woman is trying to prove that her brother actually never did the thing that people say that he did. And throughout, she sort of goes through her own life crisis and the government starts to meddle in her life because she's not following the rules that they've set out for all of their population to follow anymore. It's another totalitarian kind of book. Not similar to 1984, but like 1984, where the government is very controlling of everything that everybody does. And if you don't follow the rules that they set out for you, then you're kind of a criminal and they want to put you in jail or make an example out of you or something like that. But throughout the book, she goes through this kind of wave of believing her brother is innocent and then finding out things and then maybe not believing her brother's innocent anymore and then finding out some more things and then believing he's innocent again and then at the end I actually don't really remember what she whether she thought he was innocent or not but that's not the important part of the story the important part of the story is it would make a great movie because it is a very interesting concept again and um, I feel like all of the movies that I <laughs> Um, explaining to here would be like A24 movies. Very weird, very arty, very not, you know, blockbuster friendly. But those are the best kinds of movies, is all the weird and wacky art house movies that you have to scour deep into the depths of society and maybe the internet to find. There's that. I feel like I did not describe very well what happens in this book to you, but nonetheless, the last book that I think would make a fantastic TV series is Stags by M.A. Bennett. I also don't own a copy of this book. From my limited memory of this book, from what I can remember about this book, is it is about a young person, I can't remember whether it was a boy or a girl, who gets a scholarship to go to a very elite private school for only very smart or very rich people. And they go to the school, they start the school, and they kind of don't really fit in because they were homeschooled before they, go, they went to the school, as far as I can remember. So, you know, they don't have the social skills to be making friends, and they're not one of the popular kids, and all of those things. But then, one day they get a strange invitation from one of the most popular kids, one of the, the popular boy, to go visit this boy's house for the weekend with also the rest of the group of the popular kids. And this person's like, oh, well, surely I must take this opportunity to get in with the cool crowd. So they go to this person's house for the weekend and then chaos ensues because this boy's parents are not at home but they do have a lot of household staff but also because the staff is on the payroll they don't exactly say no to anything that the boy wants to do and some of the um, activities including in this weekend away is hunting fishing and shooting right but soon the person who was invited to go to this boy's house the main character, why didn't I just say that from the beginning, um, realizes that actually what is happening at this house is um, more of like a death game rather than just, you know, old timey hunting deer and fishing and shooting things. No, no. It turns out that everybody who came to visit this house over the weekend is a target in these games and at the end of it all probably only one of them is going to survive and that's all I can really remember but I remember it being a really good story and I remember it being very vivid in my head that it could be made into a series so there's my list of all the movies I mean of all the books that I want to see made into movies or TV shows I hope you enjoyed my little ramble down <laughs> movie and TV series lane. If you have any books that you've read 
that you want to see turned into a movie or a TV series, please let me know down below in the comments because I would love to read about all the different kinds of movies and TV series that could be made, possibly from books that people have read. And maybe I'll read the books because they might sound interesting to me once you've explained it to me. But other than that, I want to thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you again next week with another video. Until then, goodbye.